Let me just, for anyone just joining us, we're, we're covering a, a legal and, and possibly a political earthquake at this moment. That remains to be seen. ABC News is at this point exclusively reporting that former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows has been granted immunity by Special Counsel Jack Smith's office. I'll, I'll read more to you from this story, Tim Hafey, because it gets at a lot of uh, the intersection of, of what the committee uh, developed evidence-wise. ABC News is reporting this, quote, Trump was already questioning the integrity of the election months before Election Day. The committee successfully slid the timeline back with evidence developed through Tom Fitton and others. Um, back to ABC, quote, then within hours of polls closing on November 3rd, 2020, as Trump was beginning to lose key states, Trump claimed on national TV that it was, quote, all a major fraud. Quote, frankly, we did win this election, Trump declared. Mark Meadows told Jack Smith's investigators earlier this year that he's long believed Trump was being dishonest when he made that statement, given the fact that votes were still being counted and the results from several states were not in yet. Nevertheless, public testimony has shown that in the weeks after the election, Meadows helped Trump vet allegations of fraud that were making their way to Trump from people like Rudy Giuliani, whom Trump put in charge of legal efforts to keep Trump in the White House. Meadows said that by mid-December, he privately informed Trump and Giuliani privately informed Trump that Giuliani hadn't produced any evidence to back up the many allegations he was making. Then Attorney General Bill Barr also informed Trump and Mark Meadows in an Oval Office meeting that allegations of election fraud were, quote, not panning out, as Barr recounted in testimony to Congress last year. So many intersections, Tim Afey, with the evidence you and the, the members of the Select Committee developed. And to, to a point you made again the first time I talked to you, none of the new evidence, none of the witnesses would be helpful to Trump in terms of the facts. No, look, this is what happens when finally people's backs are to the wall with potential criminal prosecution, right? It sounds like, according to the reporting, that the special counsel immunized Mark Meadows. He, he initially asserted a Fifth Amendment privilege validly because he does have criminal exposure. He was part of this conspiracy. But then he was immunized and he had nowhere else to turn. He couldn't blow us off like he did with the committee. He couldn't assert any more privilege. He finally had to tell the truth. So the special counsel is using that powerful tool. And as you just said, Nicole, he's getting corroborative additional evidence. Again, the select committee made a decision that based on the record we had developed, the evidence, the facts that we had uncovered, there was more than sufficient evidence to, uh, to, to lead to that criminal referral and to demonstrate the violations of federal criminal statutes. Jack Smith has gone beyond that, right? We didn't have this, this uh, direct account of Mark Meadows. So what I always expected is exactly what's happening, that the special counsel using the legal tools that are available uniquely to a criminal prosecutor with a grand jury investigating these facts is aggressively corroborating the core story. It doesn't change the core narrative that we laid out over the course of the summer hearings. It only makes the case stronger. All of this, all of these pleas in Georgia and the immunity in Washington, just they have a sense of the wall starting to close in. Uh, finally, finally closer and closer to accountability. And Greg, listen, the, the Georgia prosecution, you know, again, we don't know much more than what we're able to report from our friends over at ABC News. But there were legal flops. There were legal face plants, if you will, that uh, Mark Meadows encountered when he sought to have his his his, his charges being charged in the criminal conspiracy alongside Trump and Jenna Ellis and Sidney Powell and John Eastman and Rudy and others moved to federal court. That that, that failed, and that may um, in in the. The telling of history, we don't know this yet, that may end up playing into the legal pressures he felt before federal investigators. Exactly. Maybe it did. Maybe that testimony that he, he made in, in federal court to try to remove that case to federal court that, that folks feel that like backfired could have played into it. But look, the screws are tightening. Um, and anything that happens, any sort of testimony he, he delivers in the Jack Smith case uh, could very well work against him down here in Georgia. And we, we talk about the big fish earlier. Well, of course, Mark Meadows is one of them, along with Rudy Giuliani and the former president. So this is interesting, Greg. Um, this is in ABC's new reporting, and I've not heard this before, but ABC News is reporting that Meadows told Jack Smith's investigators that around the time of the Brad Raffensperger call, quote, there were many times he wanted to resign over concerns that the way certain allegations of fraud were being handled 
could have a negative impact, but he ultimately didn't leave because he wanted to help ensure a peaceful transfer of power. I think the, um, the, the, the voters or the election workers in Georgia who've had their lives changed forever, Ruby Freeman, Shea Moss, um, didn't see him really trying to balance those two things, as, as he seems to have reportedly told investigators he did. But it is an extraordinary revision on one of the central figures of overturning the election, and specifically in Georgia. And Nicole, that goes back to something we were just discussing, which is he's doing one thing, he's alleging he's doing one thing behind the scenes while publicly he's promoting those election fraud lies. He made that surprise visit to Georgia to uh, watch as Co Cobb County election workers were, were, uh, were, were counting absentee ballots. You know, he, he kept on promoting those election fraud lies. He played a part in that Raffensperger phone call. So regardless of what he's saying now that he did behind the scenes, we know what he said publicly, and that's going to play into everything that happens both with the federal trial and the trial here in Georgia. Um Carol, let me read a little bit more to you from, from ABC News, because there's there's a lot of intersectionality with things that The Washington Post and others have, have reported on, um, and specifically the role of Bill Barr's stewardship at the Justice Department and the rather extraordinary practice of investigating claims of voter fraud without any predicate. Uh, Meadows told investigators he uh, believes the Justice Department was taking allegations of fraud seriously, properly investigating them and doing all they could to find legitimate cases of fraud. And he told investigators he relayed all that to Trump a few weeks after the election. Similarly, as described by sources to ABC News, despite Meadows telling investigators that Giuliani never produced evidence of significant fraud in the election, his book refers to Giuliani's efforts to expose the fraud and the dirty tricks on election night. The people who rigged this election knew that eventually these irregularities would come to light. So they conducted the operation, then attacked anyone who dared to ask questions about what he had done, his book says goes on to say that he, he conceded to investigators, quote, that he doesn't actually believe some of the statements in his own book. This is who they are. You know, Mark Meadows, to me, is one of the most fascinating characters, Nicole, for the reasons you're just flagging. Um, he was a politician. Uh, he was not George Bush's chief of staff, the, the famous Jim Baker, who, who basically told the president, this is what you got to do, son. Uh, he was a chief of staff who was trying to please the president, please Republicans on the Hill and make sure that they stayed in power, and often please whichever audience he was in front of. And it was a, a problem because he was telling the president, for example, yes, sir, I understand we need to look into these allegations of fraud. He was on the phone call with Brad Raffensperger saying, I'm sorry, Mr. Raffensperger, I'm sorry, Mr. Secretary, I think we're going to find out that there are quite a few more allegations and instances where dead people were being used as voting counts that were fraudulent. He was saying things in front of the president that were enabling, and yet our reporting at the Washington Post indicates that behind the scenes, he was doing exactly what ABC News alleges he's told Smith. And that was with Pat Cipollone, the White House counsel, with Eric Hirschman, another White House lawyer, with Bill Barr. He was quietly conferring and saying, let's just get to the transfer of power. Let's just land this plane. And it's hard to be a chief of staff who enables your president's um, willfully false claims that there is election fraud when all of that election fraud's been denied as false, and a uh, chief of staff who's privately, quietly telling the entire cabinet, uh, hopefully this will all be over soon, friends. Let's just try to get to the end of this. Let's just try to keep the emperor happy until then.